Best Friends Animal Society is working to make a difference. We'll find out how next on City Corner. Potter and welcome to City Corner. Well, we all love our pets. In fact, I'd go even further than that and say we even love other people's pets, most of us a lot of times. Uh, our guest today is Leedy Van Cavage. Leedy is the Senior Legislative Attorney for Best Friends Animal Society. Hi, Leedy. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Steve. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> well, I guess we should do full disclosure. Full disclosure. We, we, I, I haven't seen you much in a lot of years, but we go back a long way. We go back a long way when you helped Metro East Humane Society and their walkathon, and you were like the, the big fundraiser for years, <laughs> and, and of course, the, the glib MC. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what they called me? I think so. <laughs> Yeah, I worked at the uh, radio station in Alton, Illinois for about eight years, and yeah. that's how I know you from. You did work with the Madison County Humane Society mm -hmm. and others. Yes, yes, and that's, you know, so Metro, and Madison County Humane Society met, morphed into Metro East, and so, yeah, so that's where we go back from. Well, I want to ask you about this organization because um, it's been around for a long time, although I'd never heard of it, so I can't be the only one. Uh -huh. Uh, before we do that, though, we'll hit this again later. I know you have a you have an event in St. Louis coming up. But we want to be sure and let people know about that. Yeah, we have this great event. It's called Strut Your Mutt, and it's in Tillis Park, September 28th. And people can walk to raise money for local shelters. So it's it's way cool. Go on the Strut Your Mutt website. Um, you can join um, teams to raise money for Stray Rescue, Metro East Humane Society, Partners for Pets, Open Door, whole bunch of um, animal organizations. Or if you just want to raise money for for animals generally throughout mm -hmm. the United States. So they're going to, you know, a lot of fun events, um, costume, costume, uh, costumes, uh, For the contests. dogs or the yeah, people? That, well, for the <laughs> dogs and people, but mostly the dogs, okay? <laughs> and then the dogs can get little pedicures, so <laughs> face painting for the people, you know? So it'll be a lot of fun. So I hope that everybody will come out on uh, September 28th. Yeah, it just scared me. I'm wondering. I guess most people that do this kind of work uh, for this kind of cause have their own pets. But are there people that don't have pets and still do it? Actually, there are. And there are a lot of people, especially um, like um, a, a friend of mine, Cynthia Bathurst with Safe Humane Chicago, is all about the interrelationship between people and pets, and she doesn't have a dog. So there are people that don't have dogs or cats that still want to see safe and humane communities. And, and I think that's great, because that's what we all want. And boy, that's, that certainly is an issue. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, indeed. How big of an issue is it? It's, you know, it, it, it is, well, there are a lot of problems, you know, with, you know, um, people and, and their control of dogs. Unfortunately, there are some reckless owners out there, but we try to make sure that um, reckless owners actually don't have pets. <laughs> I mean, we think, you know, <laughs> if you're, a, you know, a bad owner, you really probably shouldn't have a dog or a cat. And, and Yeah. But I was going to say, Leedy, that not that hard to do? Well, actually, more and more cities are enacting um, problem pet owner or reckless pet owner ordinances that prevent people who have been convicted of animal abuse, dog fighting, um, or let their dog run amok and attack somebody. Um, they, you know, actually, they don't allow them to have dogs. Highland Park, Illinois, just enacted one. Skokie, Illinois, Tacoma, Washington. So we're seeing a trend where people are starting to focus for safe and humane communities on not only the dogs, but the owners. And mm. I think that makes sense. You know, um, when I commit animal abuse, <laughs> it, no, let me finish, <laughs> it sounds worse than it is. It's like if I yell at my dog and yeah. I feel guilty. To me, that's animal yeah. abuse. Yeah. But in all serious, seriousness, though, it's really amazing what some people do. And you know, every once in a while, it pops up in the news, there are a lot of stories I've seen with Stray Rescue. Yeah. There was one earlier in the year where, remember all those animals were found in the building, one was hanging out the window. It was just yeah. horrifying. No, it is. It, there's, you know, so people do some really, really horrible things to animals, and they need to be punished because, you know, they can escalate and go on to do these horrible things to people. I mean, a violence to animals is linked to violence to humans. So we need to focus on that because we do, you know, everybody wants safe and humane communities, and that's what Best Friends is, is all about. And it's also about, you know, saving them all, 
we basically want to reduce the number of animals dying in our shelters. And you have to think the kind of person that would have no regard for the life of an animal you wonder how much regard they have for their fellow human beings. Indeed, indeed. You know, we're all, you know, Best Friends is all about kindness, you know, to, to people and animals. Well, let's talk about Best Friends Animal Society. I've never heard of it, but uh -huh. it's been around a long time. Could you give us a little background? Yeah, um, Best Friends has been around for about 30 years, and it is a great, oh, and that is Joy. Um, the picture you're seeing now is Joy, and she is one of the Missouri 500, the largest fight bust in United States history. She was um, housed here in Missouri, and she was one of the, four fight bus dogs that came to Best Friends. Um, three have been adopted, and Joy is still at the sanctuary, so if anybody wants to adopt this sweet little dog who I spend overnights with when I go to the sanctuary, <laughs> that, you know, you can. Um, that is my Karma. She, again, is one of the Missouri 500. That's yours? Yeah, she's my little dog, my little, yeah, fight bus dog who my cats beat up, and she is in her little red coat there. I see. She's, al <laughs> she's already dressed for Strut Your Mud. Right? Yes, she is, but I don't know if we'll wear that coat, so yes, yes. And here's a good point. Yes. We're not just talking about dogs. No, we're talking about wonderful cats, too, and that actually, full disclosure, is my beloved cat, Telluride, um, who loves me and not my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Did you plan it that way, or did that just happen? <laughs> he just, it's just, it's, yeah, yeah we, we, dis we discussed it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, again, we have these wonderful adoption events where kids can get involved and try to help the animals, help get them home. And it even goes beyond dogs and cats, doesn't it? Oh, it does. We, at the sanctuary, we have horses, we have pot pigs, we have, you know, turkeys, we have um, wild neighbors. Turkeys? We, you know, well, the turkeys, we... Best Friends is on 3,500 acres. We house 1,800 rescue animals there, and we adopt them out, too. So, um, so we have horses you can adopt, burros, um, you know, and then we have wild friends that we, you know, are, w do wildlife rehabilitation there. So hmm. it's, it's a beautiful place by Zion National Park and Bryce National Park. I mean, it's, you know, it's wonderful. Explain how that works. They have their headquarters there, but it's a national organization, mm -hmm. and you're, you're, you work both like, mostly in Illinois and I, Missouri? I, well, I work, um, since I'm a legislative attorney, I cover 50 states, but I work out of my house in Collinsville. So it's uh -huh. great. Yeah, it's a great gig. Huh. And, and I go to Best Friends frequently. I'm going there um, you know, very soon again for a week. Well, how is Best Friends different than other org similar organizations like Humane Society? Um, uh, well, is there a lot of difference, maybe, well, is the question. Well, we, we have some similarities. We, you know, work on issues like we both, you know, fight breed discrimination, work on, you know, try to fight puppy mills. Um, you know, try to reduce the killing. But Best Friends really has been a leader in the no-kill movement for 30 years. I mean, we truly believe that the 9,000 animals that die each year in shel on each year, each day in shelters, 9,000 animals are killed in shelters Wait, across the United repeating. States. Yes, 9,000 animals are killed every day in shelters throughout the United States. We want to get that down. We think you can save them all. And so our focus is basically getting to no more homeless pets, to, to getting to no kill. Where do most, um, th these generalizations, I guess, where do most of these pets come from that end up in shelters? Oh, a variety of, of places. They could, they can be strays, um, they can be pe like, the, your little dog, a woman went into a nursing home, her family didn't want her, and they give the animal to the shelter. Right. Foreclosures, you know, divorces, um, landlord issues, uh, it, you know, it's, it's really tragic. And there are some great dogs and cats to be adopted at these shelters, wonderful animals. Uh, it might be interesting to talk about the whole psychology of people that um, treat animals like that. Do you, do you, do you go there? Uh, the, uh, the psychology of the person that would just give up an animal because it's inconvenient or not treat it humanely. Well, you know, we think the human and animal bond is something precious. And we try to, you know, foster that relationship and show how much you can gain from it. And, and we're seeing more, that happening more and more. We, we're seeing court case dogs where dogs are used in court to, you know, help the witnesses calm down, especially, you know, children. Um, we're seeing therapy dogs, you know, we're seeing programs where um, uh, people read to dogs, or, you know, the kids read to dogs. In fact, there's a, one of the Michael Vick dogs and Best Friends got 22 of the Michael Vick dogs. Um, Ten wow. have been adopted, um, but they are wonderful, wonderful creatures, even though they, you know, were very badly abused. And one of the dogs um, that 
went to uh, an organization called Bad Rap, was named Johnny Justice, and Johnny Justice um, goes to the library every Saturday and the little children read to him, and actually he is now a gunned stuffed animal. So you can get the little, you know, ex Michael Vick dog as a stuffed animal, which is pretty cute. Wow. <laughs> it, it must be challenging too sometimes because depending on what an animal's been through, it will affect them, no fault of their own, but if they've been abused, they might have, I don't know, personality disorders, would that be the right way to put it? it well, you know, so, yeah, like some post-traumatic stress to, to some, yeah. yeah. I mean, when we got little Karma, you know, she um, she was scared of cars, so Cliff would take her on a walk and she would flatten like a planarian, you know, but then, but now she's great. She's in actually a doggy daycare now, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> traveling tales over in Illinois, interacting with, you know, 40 dogs, and she's an ex-fight bus dog, you know? So Best Friends started about 30 years ago. Yeah. I said, do you know much about the history of what happened? Um, basically, they started rescuing animals, and they decided they needed to start a sanctuary, and they found this beautiful canyon. It's called Angel Canyon, and they pooled their money, bought it, and just started rescuing animals and founded a nonprofit. So it's really, you know, at first they were just doing sanctuary work, but then um, Best Friends Management realized, you know, we're never going to be able to save them all through the sanctuary. We need national outreach. We need to change the laws. We need to take action for animals and, and, and speak out against things like breed discrimination or picking up stray cats and just killing them. Um, you know, speaking out against puppy mills. So that's, you know, so we're trying to, to, to really work with animal control to get to no-kill. Uh -huh. And actually Salt Lake, one of the places we work with Salt Lake, Salt Lake County Animal uh, Services regularly, and they are at, you know, no-kill status. They have saved 90% of all the animals they come in, dogs and cats, pit bulls included. So it, it's wonderful. So the animals at the Sanctuary of Best Friends, do they come from all over the country? All over the country. And basically we have network partners, which a lot of organizations are network partners. Um, uh, Metro East Humane Society is a network partner. There's a, a bunch of organizations here that are network partners. And if they have a, a, a sad case, like especially animals with you know, um, neurological disorders, um, very, very serious medical problems, um, they can apply and get the animal into best friends. Well, and because we have a great veterinary staff. We need to take a short break, and when we come back, there's a lot more to talk about uh, stuff. Uh, we can talk about specific legislation, I think, too, that great. you've been involved with and things that are making a difference. We're talking about Best Friends Animal Society, and we'll be back right after this. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV love you. JK. Holla back, holla back, holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What did you dream of? Something I did. Are you on your way to the moon? Only nude pics. Send me some. Text me.
Christy Potter and welcome back to City Corner. Our guest today is Lady Van Cavage. She's the senior legislative attorney for Best Friends Animal Society. And uh, Lady, how did it all start for you? Um, you grew up in Collinsville, mm -hmm. you got your law degree at SLU. At SLU, yes. So did you always do this or were you ever, I don't know, doing divorce cases or uh, something? I, you know, I, I did my time uh, in, law, in law school. I worked at um, Legal Aid and that was interesting. Um, and then I worked actually um, at the U.S. District Court the, in Southern Illinois, the Illinois Appellate Court, um, Health and Human Services, and then I got the great gig with the ASPCA, and I was with them for um, nine years, and then Best Friends lured me away. So, um, so I've been really lucky for the last, you know, 10 years, well, 15 years, practicing animal law. I mean, it's a great gig. Because it was a, was it a, I guess at one time probably it was just your passion and you exactly what you know what were you doing right? it, was, it was my passion um, and that's why you know I helped found Metro East Humane Society and I still do a little you know things with them here and there but I'm so busy now covering 50 states for best friends that I don't get to do much locally which is kind of sad but I love what I do but does that mean you travel a lot I travel a lot <laughs> <laughs> I am on the road a lot, yes, and I was, um, last year I was the um, chair of the American Bar Association's Animal Law Committee, so I had a lot of things doing with, you know, with the ABA, and that was interesting. Okay. Best Friends, uh, your website is bestfriends.org, and we'll have, and we have had contact information. According to your website, and I think you mentioned this earlier, you did. Every day, more than 9,000 dogs and cats are killed in American shelters. Every day. I can't quite get past that. Every day. Every, and these are great dogs and cats, kittens and puppies, you know, that really, really need homes. And we, so we want to encourage people to adopt. And the frightening thing is we did a national survey that showed people ages 18 to 24 are more likely to get their animal from a pet shop than go to a shelter. And that just stunned me because I thought we were breaching, you know, the youth audience. And so, you youngsters out there, you know, you need to basically go to an animal shelter and adopt. But the, the animals that are most at risk in, in shelters are pitties and kitties, pit bull terriers and um, kitties. And so we're trying to encourage um, people not to, you know, in shelters, not to bring, you know, not to trap stray cats and don't bring them in. I mean, basically, a lot of places with progressive programs, and there are places here in St. Louis that are doing this too, um, for the feral or community cats, you just sterilize them and put them back out. Really? Yeah, and they, they do fine. You know, it's funny, I had an incident yesterday, <laughs> just by coincidence, <laughs> um, and it made me, th I thought it was like a it was meant to happen. I was in my yard just yesterday, uh -huh. and all of a sudden, I've got a, I've got a fenced-in yard because I have small dogs, and it's very secure, but you know, cats yeah. can get anywhere. All of a sudden, there's this cat a few feet away from me, and I could just tell, I could tell someone wasn't right about it, just by the way it moved, by the way it acted, it seemed lethargic, and just by the, its appearance, I thought, that's a feral cat. And I, I didn't know what to do, or if I should do anything. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, of course, I do trap, neuter, and return all the time. So, and now that we have the wonderful Carroll House, you know, snip clinic, basically, you can get um, feral cats done for 25 bucks. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, there's a wonderful new spay neuter clinic here in St. Louis off of Jefferson, and they're having a, a special this month. Pit bull spays and neuters are only 20 bucks, but anytime you bring in a feral cat, it's only $25, and that includes all the shots and the sterilization. So I just helped a, a couple in Collinsville get um, some of their cats that, that were hanging around their yard sterilized um, through the clinic, and they were wonderful. Uh, is there something you want to tell people, though, about being careful around animals that they're not familiar with? Well, of course you have to have some caution, but you know, the old adage was beware of um, mad dogs and friendly foxes. <laughs> so if a dog is frothing at the mouth, obviously you don't want to get near it. And if a, a wild animal is friendly, then it probably does have rabies. But, but usually, you know, the, the dogs and the cats are more afraid of you than, you know, you of them. But like when I saw this cat, I'd all these thoughts went through my mind. I thought, do I feed it? But then I've heard maybe I shouldn't feed it because then I'll like have a pack of wild cats that won't leave my yard. Well, see, I you know I feed, but then I sterilize too, so they don't multiply. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, you know, the trap, neuter, and return really does help. Um, you know, reduce the the killing and 
and actually, you know, I like having some, you know, the, the cats in the yard. It, it just is a, a nice thing and, and keeps some of the other varmints at bay. I want to talk about some of the legislative things you've been involved mm -hmm. with, but first, an issue that is so controversial, I think, with people, and I know you feel very strongly about it, so we, it's something we really need to address. It's the whole thing about pit bulls. <laughs> a lot of people are scared of pit bulls. They have a terrible reputation, which I, I'm pretty sure you're going to tell me is not always deserved. It, indeed, it is not. <laughs> I guess so my question is, why is that there? Why is that there? Why is there that perception then? Well, I think a lot of it, and again, not to disparage anyone in the media, but I think a lot of it is media bias. You're not I looking mean, at me, are you? Not, not, not at you. No, but <laughs> but in, in general, because um, it, it's amazing. I've got friends in animal control that'll tell me that they'll have an incident where you know that'll go off on the scanner that a you know a, a serious dog attack, and media will call them up and say, hey, what kind of dog was it? And they'll say it was a golden retriever or practically rip this kid's face off and they won't cover the story you know but if it's a pit bull that you know bites a chihuahua it's front page news so uh, we, we're seeing a lot of media bias and media you know over reporting but you know basically the main factors in dog related incidents and encounters according to the US Department of Justice book if I can reach it here go ahead um, basically but this is um, the, the problem of dog related incidents and encounters most of the problems occur from people who don't sterilize their dogs, um, people that let their dogs run amok, they don't train them, they abuse and neglect their dogs. And most of the dogs involved in serious dog-related incidents are resident dogs, they're not family pets, like my little Karma is, you know, Karma sleeps in bed with us. But um, they're dogs that are gotten for negative functions, like guarding, um, breeding, those sorts of things. They're dogs that people tie out in the yard and never interact with. You know, so they're not socialized, and, and that's what we're trying to, you know, basically make sure reckless owners don't have pets, and that um, we focus on the behavior of both the dog and the owner. It's part of the problem, too, with pit bulls is that maybe um, they're, you know, they're not that much more aggressive than other dogs, but when they are, they can do more tam damage just because uh, they're usually big and stronger than most other dogs. Well, they're, you know, they're not that big. I mean, they weigh 30 to 60 pounds, so they're not even as big as, you know, a Roddy, a, a German Shepherd, anything uh, you know, like that. But I think a lot of it just is, is the hype because I actually don't want to be attacked by any dog. Right. I don't care, you know, if it's a poodle, you know. I, I just think we want dogs to behave regardless of their breed, you know, and, and that's what I think we need to focus on. But the, the problem is, is places that have enacted breed discriminatory laws, their bite stats haven't gone down. You know, in fact, sometimes their bites increase. So we want to focus on things that work, you know, like targeting the owner, targeting the behavior of, of any dog. Um, because any dog, you know, can, you know, injure people. There was a Pomeranian that killed a baby. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, you, you want all dogs to behave and their owners. Right. Yeah, well, sometimes maybe the owners are more difficult than the dogs. I think that is a lot of the problem. <laughs> are there... Um are there certain places of the country that have different attitudes on this topic, or is it just hit and miss wherever you go? Well, actually, we're seeing a really encouraging trend that Best Friends is, is, is spearheading to get rid of breed discriminatory laws. And this year, three states have passed statutes that prohibit cities or towns from enacting breed discriminatory laws because they don't work, and they're extremely expensive to enforce, and they interfere with property rights. I mean, you know, this in America, I should be allowed to own whatever breed of dog I want as long as I'm responsible, you know, I, because it's, it's, it's silly for, you know, um, for University City to say, oh, you can't have a pit bull. I mean, that's just, that's ludicrous, you know, um, and, and it doesn't make communities safer. You know, um, I watch People's Court, I have to admit. <laughs> Do you know where I'm going with this? And I, I'll say up front that I know that that meant, probably doesn't make me an authority on the law yeah. <laughs> because they're kind of, uh, you know, uh, gray areas of people's court. Uh -huh. But um, I do know from watching this kind of shows that the, the law looks at animals as property. property. Yes. Is that good or bad? Well, actually, um, for um, pit bull terriers, I think it's good because you can't take away my property without due process of law. So, um, so it's up to cities that have breed discriminatory laws to prove that my dog of unknown heritage is a pit bull. And so it's up to the city to pay for the DNA testing. It's up to the city to basically prove it in court, you know, if it's a criminal penalty beyond a reasonable doubt. 
you know. So that's a pretty hard standard. And I think, you know, more and more we're seeing young animal attorneys challenging these ordinances because the cities, are, you know, really aren't proving it. They're not doing the testing. We just have a couple of minutes left, but what are you most proud of that you've done so far legislatively? Probably all the work in Illinois because Illinois, according to the Animal Legal Defense Fund, is now the most humane state in the nation for animal laws and companion animal laws and I helped spearhead about 20 of those so that's that you know I'm really proud of the state of Illinois Missouri's got a way to go <laughs> we want to remind people about strut your mutt coming up in September too. go over that again. yes uh, September 28th strut your mutt Tillis Park it'll be great bring your dog you can you know there'll be a lot of fun costumes contests um, and things to do so come and strut your mutt and raise money for local animal shelters what's it like working with politicians which I guess is probably the most of what you do. I'm, no, I'm yeah. curious, are they open to this? Yeah, they are. I mean, because, it, and it's really interesting because it cuts across party lines. I mean, you know, Republicans and Democrats love dogs and cats. And so it's that's... It's nice to find something we can agree it, on. It, a commonality. It really is. <laughs> it really is. And actually, most of them agree on property rights issues, too. So really? it's good. Yeah. So you're encouraged then? I'm very encouraged. I love my job. And I love most of the politicians I work with are wonderful, wonderful right. people. So what's the good news statistically when we're talking about what we're talking about? Statistically is when Best Friends started, 17 million dogs and cats were dying in shelters. Now it's, it's down to about 4 million. That's still too many, but we're headed in the right direction. And with everybody's help, we really can save them all. Well, what can the average person do? Um, they can adopt, they can donate, they can volunteer, they can foster, you know, kittens or puppies. I mean, because a lot of the animals that are dying in shelters are kittens and puppies because they're too young to handle shelters. So if you could take a litter of kittens or puppies for a while to foster, that would really help. And how big of an issue is funding for organizations like Best Friends? Um, you know, Best Friends is, is lucky. I mean, we always need funds, you know, we were a nonprofit. And, but we try to, you know, the funds we get in, we try to get them to other communities. That's why we're doing Strut Your Mud, to help empower the organizations in the St. Louis area to become no kill. Well, I always like to end an interview on a positive note. So I, I'm going to leave that up to you. Okay, well, I think we are heading in the right direction, and I really do think we can save them all. So let's remember uh, September 28th in Tillis Park for Strut Your Mutt, and uh, go to the Best Friends website. If people want to know more, there's always an opportunity to volunteer, to donate, to get involved, I guess, however, however you want to, right? Indeed, indeed. We need volunteers. Lady Van Cavage, it's been, it's been great knowing you all these years, and uh, I love your love of animals, and uh, you're living your passion and doing good work. And, and, and I thank you for having me, Steve. It's been great. Thanks, lady. Best thank of you. luck to you. Thank you. Uh, that's all the time we have for this edition of City Corner. Thanks so much for being a part of it. And don't forget to stretch your mutt in September. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.